Good morning, class five. Good afternoon and a good evening to all of you. Now, children, we have progressed a lot. Y'all are sending your homework on time. I'm getting to see you converting the images into a PDF and mailing me as well. That's fantastic. Yes, y'all have all learned. So we wouldn't address ourselves as technically challenged anymore, isn't it? We have become digitally sound now. Yes, we have learned a lot of things during this one session. We've had a hurricane session, isn't it? And we have also had so many hardships and hurdles and obstacles coming ahead of us. But then we have overcome that. So you can give a pat to your shoulder, right? You can give a pat to your shoulder when you're watching this. That's like, good job, Gargi. Good job. And your name. Okay? That's how you do it. When you pep yourself up, you can just say your name. Isn't it? You can say Arush Ansh. Good job. And you give a pat like that. All right? So now we uh, progress towards the end. We just have two more chapters that is counting today and indirect and direct speech, right? So I am taking up English grammar today. I have mailed a lot of answer keys all combined together, which you can download from the portal, which will facilitate you accordingly. I have also given you a breather, like by this particular Sunday, you need to mail me. And of course, I am yet to revert to all your mails as well for this weekend. Uh, I mean, last weekend. So this weekend, I will certainly do so. Please bear with me. And uh, see you tomorrow in the live class uh, with literature, right? Now, also, there's another thing I would like to tell you, children. We are going to have an oral test. So what I would suggest to you is... Please prepare yourself with the meanings and understanding the text from your My Best Book 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, whichever numbers we have uh, mentioned in our final assessment syllabus. So the chapters which have been listed in our syllabi for the final term, please note that prepare yourself with understanding the text, which is objective and also meanings and your think and answers are very very important children i've been mailing you additional information with the summary so that you are able to learn to write and frame to write answers where you have to logically think where you have to analyze and write on your own and you all are all doing a wonderful job so do not leave out the reference to context do not leave out think and answer. Do not leave out answer the uh, questions because children, we are going to have this time MCQ that is objective as well as subjective. So I'm sure uh, we will uh, make you aware about the same. Principal ma'am has taken up a step. So do not get worried or alarmed. Okay, you will get to know how to go about with the procedure. Okay, ma'am is going to announce it shortly all right so please uh, by that time what i would suggest is children do not leave out any chapter do not go for shortcuts shortcuts success through shortcuts are going to be short-lived okay your hard work your hardship uh, your hardships your hard work pays in the long run okay shortcut to success is going to be very very short-lived please note that because your final report card, that is your progress report for the final term, has to be impressive, isn't it? Because your whole year's efforts are going to get reflected in that. So you have to put your best foot forward and perform. That's your only job, isn't it? You just have to perform. The food is being served and cooked by the elders in the house. Yes, your uh, expenses are taken care, uh, taken care by your parents isn't it you your part is just to be good study hard yes and cooperate with your family members as well as the school that's your job isn't it you don't have too much of stress also you just have to perform right and the online platform has made it so easier for you you have got into the system of uh, digital education right 
so i'm sure you will do well okay as i said put your best foot forward and give your best it's just a matter of one and a half months right one and a half months because i'm sure you all must have got the uh, date sheet so you just have to put in effort for one and a half months forget about gaming forget about television forget about movies i'm not saying you continuously sit with the book engrossed in it no you should have an itinerary for the day that means a timetable a routine for the day right you should always plan your day ahead if you don't plan it ahead you cannot you know uh be organized it will be always disorganized and your schedule will look imbalanced okay so that's it enough of uh you know guidance i've given you through this audio vision now let us come back to the chapter we are yes we are doing uh tuning to grammar right and the chapter's name is punctuation now punctuation chapter is very very important for reading learning speaking and writing okay ls wr so listening speaking writing and reading that's what how we say why because supposing you are now you might say ma'am how is uh, punctuation important while reading of course you should know where to pause when it's a question how should you read that when it's an expression when it's an exclamation mark how should you read that when it's a comma how should you read that okay how much should you pause for a full stop comma so punctuations are very very vital for reading writing listening and speaking in the sense when you're framing a writing of your own when you're writing out something on your own you have to be very very careful about your punctuation if you write a complete sentence and you forget to give a question mark there or a full stop there or if it's an expression you uh, forget to put in the exclamation mark then the whole effort goes down the drain so let me just take up one by one okay the punctuation because you all are already aware of capital letters that is lower case and upper case you know when to begin when should you begin with an upper case which is capital letter and how you should begin a sentence okay right so these are simple things which you are already aware in the previous classes now let us go to little complex things okay now let me write down the date Today is what is the date today today is 3rd right fine today is the 3rd of see days are just flying by isn't it january just got over now february is almost exhausted 3 days yes and there are 28 days in this month right there are 28 days and have you noticed something children uh it's beginning with a monday again march is going to begin with a monday so it's so good 1 to 7 is like monday to sunday again 8 to 14 is like monday to sunday and again if you check the calendar for march 2021 it begins on a monday as well so it's like fantastic right because four sevens are 28 so four weeks into seven days gives you 28 days of february okay enough of talk talk gargi mams done now she has to begin with the chapter okay it's a wednesday right and we are doing punctuation yes punctuation chapter number 23 and from the book tig what is tig tune into grammar okay the idea is to into gram now the first thing have you seen page number 147 please open page number 147 rewrite these sentences after inserting the missing punctuation marks okay so let us take the first one number 
Let me write down the page number as well. It is page number 147, right? Why are you late? Why are you late? Sorry. So what should be the missing punctuation? I could hear the whole of class 5 saying, Ma'am, question mark. Yes. And have you seen that the Y was small? Right? So I have taken it as an uppercase. It was in lowercase. Right? Fine. Now number 2. Number two, my grandmother and I are good friends. So my grandmother and I. I'm sure your grandmother and you are also best friends. Right. Are good friends. Yes, we are lucky to have our grandparents who are really our friend. And they would always cover up our faults, isn't it? Our grandparents are like that. They're so protective about us. And I are good friends. All right? So this is how the question has been written without any. Have you seen something, children? I hope you're able to see. My. So this has to be capital M. And why? Children, you have to touch the lines and write. Yes, I am getting a lot of beautiful handwriting now. Class 5, all of you are improving in your handwriting. Okay? That's what I have noticed in the previous uh, uh, corrections I have just taken up. So, good job. Again, class 5. So, work on your writing. Because if you have, you know, your handwriting makes the first impression to an examiner. The moment your answer script is opened in front. Oh, what a beautiful handwriting. So it's very, very important to have a beautiful handwriting, right? So my is the capital you will have to. And then what is missing here? The full stop, right? Now number three. Oh God, scream the girl, okay? Oh God, scream the girl. So that is something you are going to do on your own. I can just tell you it's an expression and what you have to do, where you have to insert the exclamation, where you have to insert the full stop, that is your work. Because I have just taken up uh, two examples. Number three, Anchel, uh, wanted bread, butter, jam and cheese. So there are commas coming in, there are uh, capital letters coming in and there has to be a full stop. Similarly exclamation where you have to insert right number five can you press the sorry can you pass the notebook please excuse me so you're again asking somebody you're requesting so you know where to insert which punctuation mark because we have also a part of this while uh, done while we were doing our uh, declarative interrogative yes during the chapter the sentences right in the beginning right now let us proceed with semicolon, okay? So semicolon is basically a pause which is longer, okay? Whenever you want a break in a sentence where you want there to be a stop, like pause, okay, quiet for some time. That's where you insert a semicolon, right? Okay, for example. How do you do? Okay. I bought wrappers. Okay. Please look at the board carefully. Okay. Wrappers, streamers. I'll move away from the board, children. I know I'm blocking the view of the camera. Streamers. Balloons, candles, then a pause, and a lot of eatables. Okay, so can you see? 
see this I have given a dot on top and a comma. This is how I want. So I am reading, supposing I bought wrappers, streamers, balloons, candles and lot of eatables. So that is where you use a semicolon. If you can just see in your book, right? How do you do that? Okay. So it is basically a long pause, but it is not longer than a full stop. So it's a break. It is longer than a comma. Okay. But shorter than a shorter pause than a full stop. Okay. So you can see how do you do that when you are separating a list of items in the list? See, they are similar. Okay. Okay. These are like stationaries, isn't it? But this is totally different. Eatables do not come along with wrappers, streamers, balloons, candles, isn't it? So I have separated that from the list of items. That is why I have used a semicolon. Okay. As and when you will do children, you will get it in the flow. Okay. Similarly, let's take up another example. Okay. Let's take up another example. Okay. I bought, I hope the blue color is visible children. Yes, I bought red, purple, green, black, pink, colored pens, then a colon, okay, and a brown polish so can you see the list of items when I went to the grocery store how did I separate it okay how did I separate it this is it this is just a bracket I'm trying to show you how do you do a semicolon a dot on top and a comma okay so how did I separate the items I bought red purple green black pink colored pens and a brown shoe polish that's how because shoe polish is not gelling or connecting with my other items in the list so I've given a long pause and then mentioned about the shoe polish so semicolon I think children it's clear right then we take up colon now colon is something which we always use when we are framing our answers okay right whenever we are framing our answers so when you are introducing something in your answer the steps taken to uh, cure the patient was and then one two three four five six okay the measures adopted by the government to eradicate noise pollution R and then the colon comes in. So if you can see page number 148. So whenever you are trying to introduce a group of items of the list, that's where you use a colon. What is a colon? Two dots. Now children, there is something I want to tell you. I have noticed when you start, you will do it this. No, it's just, okay, it's just a tiny. And when you're using semicolon also, this is very bad. This is a total wrong. Look at my colon, just two dots. Okay, as I have been telling you that the dot of an eye should be a dot, isn't it? Not like a tiny microscopic zero. Okay, it's like not at all right. Fine. So you have to be very careful when you're using. Your question mark should be this is some of you are doing this. No. Your exclamation mark should be this not no so you have to be careful when you because this is again very very essential till you uh, graduate with english that is in the sense when you complete your high school okay or your secondary school right so you have to be very very careful 
in putting the punctuation marks correctly. Now coming back to colon, okay, colons are basically used to introduce a list of items, okay. Okay, how? Just a moment. There are two types of flowering plants. Okay, okay. and then you write down. That's just an example. Okay. Okay. Now, the steps taken to reduce, okay, soil erosion. You know what is erosion? Because tree, uh, the, the what you will see near the river beds, you will see a lot of Shakti mantras going and, you know, they're collecting pebbles, sand, gravel. So in the process, they are diverting the natural way of the river. So that is called soil erosion. I'm sure you all must have done this in uh, environmental education. So the steps taken to reduce soil erosion are colon, okay, colon. And then number one, number two, number three, that's how you give the step. So colon is basically you are introducing a list of items which are of the similar category. Fine? So you know what is a semicolon, you know what is a colon. Now let us take up a hyphen, okay? A hyphen. When is it used? Now hyphens, you must remember I have found that children... Breaking up a word because it is not fitting in one line, okay, on their own, like supposing it is production. So you will see the suffixes T I O N, isn't it? From produce, it changes to work. So you know what? I have seen children doing this. I'll just explain on the board, it will become easy for you because I know you know what is a hyphen, but then you'll make mistakes. You know, they are doing this. Supposing my line ends here. I O N. No, wrong. At all. Not at all. You cannot break the word until and unless you have the prefix and the suffix or the main word and the or the prefix or the main word and the suffix at the end. You just can't break up wherever you want. You see the rules, okay, with compound numbers. For example, you use a hyphen with compound numbers. What is compound? Like there are 22 students in bus number one. Okay. So when you are writing 22, I'm sure when we started with number system, the first chapter in math, we had been taught to break up the number with a hyphen. Okay. These are called compound numbers. 22. So that's how you write. You have you have the word join with a hyphen. All right. Secondly, just go to the next. We are doing it with compound nouns. Uh, sorry, numbers. Now, what are compound nouns? Remember, we had done sister-in-law, brother-in-law. Okay. So, these are compound nouns. Okay passes by remember where you have it connected with a, a hyphen so how do you write passes by please go back to the noun chapter we had done what is a compound noun yes children so grammar is something which i told you always you should not leave aside any chapter because they are all interlinked and it's more or less just like math you need to practice assorted that means you need to practice it in a group in the sense 
that not supposing i am doing punctuation but you see it has nouns also in it so it's connected so you need to practice from nouns were all parts of a speech you need to practice all right so as to have a steady flow when you are doing your exercises right do not neglect any of the chapters in grammar that's how we say okay assorted a mixed bag like your test papers which are given right at the end of the book have you seen they are a collection of all varieties assorted means variety now so you know they are used with compound numbers that is 22 35 compound nouns like passers by mother in law father in law okay etc then the next example compound adjectives what are compound adjectives sun dried okay 10 story okay so these are compound adjectives okay so we know how to use i've been telling you a hyphen but we do not know where to actually insert it we just can't break off the word and insert right i've been telling you you cannot break up the word on your own it is to be used only in compound noun compound numbers and compound adjectives right so are you clear with this thoroughly fine so will you be able to do the exercise on your own i'm sure you will be able to do the exercise on your own it's simple now put a tick mark against the sentences that are correctly punctuated so what you will have to do of course the answer keys are there but then i told you what is the rule for your answer key you will not use it to copy so put a tick mark against the sentences that are correctly punctuated so you are going to do this in the book rewrite the sentences by inserting semicolons colons or hyphen so you will do this in the notebook so i i'm sure you must be seeing the answer keys that i have a footnote there as well right so use that and children i have also uploaded the answer keys for literature in the same pdf right so this is going to go together now the next exercise okay punctuate this paragraph so number b is to be done in your textbook so please note other than exercise a nothing is to be done in your notebook all right only exercise number a page number 149 you're going to do it in your notebook so see you tomorrow children this is a short chapter right uh, we are keep your grammar book with you keep your literature book with you and as i have been telling if you have any doubts because i remember last time trishan forgetting to ask me the doubt because he did not know what was the doubt but then he remembers that he had a question so you keep a scribbler it's not necessary you have to buy this okay you keep a scribbler with you so that you can just jot down because all the time you cannot remember things right so what you do is you can just scribble okay this is what is to be asked to gargi ma'am this is what is to be asked to maybe roshmi ma'am this is what is to be asked to maybe surubi ma'am this is what is to be asked to maybe shongumitra ma'am any of your subject teachers so you can just scribble in a rough sheet or a scribbler which is a tiny spiral pad or whatever i'm sure you all have you all can use recycled paper staple it together and use it as a scribbler right and keep it handy by your side when you are beginning your live classes fine then you are totally organized you must have your pen pencil okay eraser right everything with you your notebook your book okay it's just like school remember it's just that the platform is virtual isn't it so what do you do you have your bag beside you isn't it and you take out your book so similarly when you're sitting down in a place a proper place you're going to just keep all the books for those four periods if you have three teaching periods and one maybe activity so you should have three books for those three periods and your notebooks for it now coming back to your examinations again children please do not neglect learning preparing the reference to context do not forget to read the chapter do not forget to practice think and answer right and for your oral start getting ready because we will uh, have it shortly maybe in a week's time okay intimation will be sent 
uh, through school. Do not worry. But why I am telling you because today is the 3rd of February and you do not have much time in your hand. And you have quite a number of subjects, isn't it? You have about five major subjects, right? What are they? English, Math, EVS, Second Language and Third Language. Other than Computer, GK, Abacus, isn't it? Computer, GK, if I'm not leaving out any. So you have quite a number of subjects. So why don't you channelize it into a timetable? Now, supposing math and grammar every day for both the languages and another subject with it. Say Monday, maybe uh, Hindi, Bengali or whatever English grammar with it, math and another subject. So you have to devote at least three to three and a half hours for your study hour now. As I said, no neglecting now. You have to work out, work out hard and you must remember there is no shortcut to success. Shortcut to success is going to be short lived, right? So take care. See you tomorrow. All the best. Put your best foot forward again and again. I've repeated the same phrase because to warm you up, okay? Because we want to see a bright report card. Okay, right? Bye.